Okay, everyone has a copy of the scriptures that we plan to be referencing today, at least most of, most of the scriptures. But I've entitled our message this morning, When Opportunity Passes By. Oh, we have great opportunity in the Lord. But that opportunity is passing away, isn't it? Slowly. By the way, in case y'all don't know it, Cheryl still does her bulletin for us and picks them out up at Shepherd. She emails them to me and I edit them, update the prayer list and print them. But this week she put one in there of people leaving this old planet, people dying. He said, every minute someone leaves this world behind, we're all in line without knowing it. We don't know how many people are before us or behind us. We can't get out of line. Somewhere in that place, we're in, we don't know what day that we're going to be leaving this old earth. But we're in line somewhere, aren't we? Anyway, I appreciate her for coming up with those things and doing the bulletin. If you talk to her, you tell her we appreciate her as she's continued to do that over these years. Okay. Let's read Luke chapter 19, verse 41 through 44. And when he, Jesus, was come near, he beheld the city of Jerusalem and wept over it. Now you can get the picture a moment before we continue. Here's the very Son of God Himself. Not a substitute, not an imposter, but the real thing that God sent into this world made of a woman to come and minister to this generation. If you think about all the thousand years that have passed on our calendars, that was a space of a little over three years that our Lord spent His ministry on this earth. Those people that were living during this particular time close to 2,000 years ago, were a blessed people indeed. They had the privilege of being the only generation ever to have the Son of Man in a bodily form with them. He spent his years, a little over three years, they say, in his ministry. And here he is coming and looking over Jerusalem and weeping. Now verse 42. Here's what he said. To Jerusalem. If thou hast known. Even thou at least in this thy day. The things which belong unto thy peace. But now. It's too late. They're hid from thine eyes. For the day shall come to pass. Come upon thee that thine enemy shall cast a trench about thee, compass thee around, and keep thee in on every side, and shall lay thee even with the ground, and thy children within thee. And thou shalt not leave in thee one stone upon another. Because I has, thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. You didn't know who was visiting with you. By the way, I, I'll throw this in. The Lord prophesied that not one stone 
was going to be left upon the other. Now those Jews today, you'll show, they'll show pictures on the news, and I've been there a couple of times, some of the rest of you have. But you go up to what's called the Wailing Wall. Over in Jerusalem, they advertise it the only part of the original wall that still stands. And I disagree with them. Because Jesus said it's going to come to pass that not one stone is going to be left upon the other. Amen. It was destroyed by Titus in 70 AD. So if you ever get the privilege to go to Jerusalem, go. But don't think that that old wailing wall is part of the original wall. It's not. Amen. I believe what our Lord said. But here we have the record of our Lord as he came from Jericho and tarried on the Mount of Olives, which is very near the Garden of Gethsemane, where he spent his last night, you remember, before they came to crucify him. And he begins to weep. And I believe when a man weeps, there's got to be a reason. What was the matter? Jerusalem he loved. Had come and spent his life, the ministry in the middle of those people. And they failed to understand who was there. That truly it was the only begotten Son of God. Jerusalem had allowed their opportunity to repent and serve God passed by. Now our Lord is lamenting the fact that destruction is awaiting them. And he foretells that destruction. He had come to them often. And each time they had rejected him. Now, I know a lot of times we read about our Lord and we find him over where he was teaching those and 5,000 gathered there and that little boy's lunch was all they had. 5,000 men. And he fed that whole bunch that was there. But then if you read a little bit further, it says he began to talk to them and they said, this is a hard, we can't understand him. And it further says they turned away from him and they walked with him no more. Now here's our Lord that never preached an imperfect message. Every message he ever preached was perfect. Everything he said was perfect. So nothing was wrong with the message. But they said this is a hard saying. And the multitude turned away from him and they walked with him no more. On the day of Pentecost, the Bible tells us that all that believed were together in one accord. Was it several thousand people? Folks, well, the multitude don't want to hear the truth. They turned away from the truth. But how many were there on the day of Pentecost? And the Lord said, all that believed were together and had all things coming. In one accord, it says. Now, you can't get 120 people in a Honda Accord. But that's what the Lord said was there was 120 people. Where were the thousands of people at? Where are they at today? And some don't come because they don't want to hear the truth. But folks, as long as we hear the word of God from God's word, it's the truth. 
There's no book comfortable to God's holy Bible, the Word of God. The printed Word. But these people were so filled with sin that they failed to recognize Him as the Messiah. Now, all the Jews, they looked for a Messiah. They're still looking for one, by the way. They said, we know the Messiah cometh because it promised that He would. But they didn't realize his name was Jesus, did they? Opportunity had been theirs. But it passed. Folk opportunity passes. Many years ago now, I was working in a manufacturing plant. Several preachers up working together there, about five of us working one shift. But we went over and tried to witness to a man who was running a molding machine. I'll never forget it. I tried to talk to him about the Lord. He said, Preacher, you're wasting your time. My dad was a Pentecostal preacher. And he told me that I was condemned to hell. And the Spirit quit striving with me. Don't waste your breath, he said. In his own mind, opportunity had passed by to be saved. Folks, that's an awful feeling. Talk to someone that says they cannot be. But I, folk, I believe that he was so confused because of his teaching. I believe he could have been saved. If he had repented and trusted the Lord as his Savior. But I'm telling you this much. Our opportunity is passing as was the opportunity of the people in our Lord's day. Just like it was in Jerusalem, especially in America, the lost have an opportunity to be saved because Jesus is passing. The gospel is preached freely. And I'm thankful for these men that go on Sunday afternoon and any other time they can and talk to people about Jesus because they want to see people saved. I thought about that over the years. And I used to call on churches in a job that I was at for some 25 years. And calling on churches, and we'd, we'd call on a bunch per day. And there were 8,000 churches in our account from here to Brownville. But we went in some, some parking lots. I'll never forget. We had some parking lots. said, enter to worship. And as you left going out the parking space, you're now entering the mission field when you left the church. Well, folk, that's so true. If we're not trying to talk to someone about Jesus, we're wasting our breath. Because that's what life's about. That's what eternal life's about. And the lost have an opportunity today to be saved. For Jesus is passing by. But I've got to tell you this much, like in the bulletin illustrated there where those people take and leave this whole earth. That opportunity will be no more. And it brings sorrow to Jesus for the lost to perish. Linda and I were up in East Texas this week. And I told some of you, so I don't want to use this as a thought a moment. We don't know where we're at in line. But while we were there uh, this week in East Texas, 
church where I used to pastor years gone by, they had a double funeral this past Wednesday. 33 and 34 year old ladies, sister-in-laws. When a car driving out Highway 84 from Mount Enterprise, about three miles out, they met an 18-wheeler. And as they approached the 18-wheeler, the 18-wheeler blew out a front tire. And it pulled them over to the middle of the highway. And those two ladies were literally burned up. Melted them. One of them had three children, and the other one, two. In a split second, you're gone, folks. In a split second. And we don't know where we're at. But I do know this. We have opportunity today. But don't take that opportunity for granted because it's passing by. The saved opportunity have opportunity unlimited to serve a living God. Now if you look back at your paper in the middle of the page, John 12 verse 35, Then Jesus said unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while you have the light. Lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. Jesus was with them. He was the light of the world. He's still the light of the world. And the Lord wants us to come to that light. And Pope, my plea and prayer is to you that you'll come to him so that you can be saved and live with us forever. When the Ages roll on and on. We want you to be present, don't we? And if the sin in our life was removed, we could better see that need. If we'd surrender our lives to Him, Look back in verse 43 and 44 we read a moment ago. For the day shall come upon thee that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee, compass thee around, and keep thee in on every side, and shall lay thee even with the ground, and thy children with thee. The children are going to die too. They shall not leave in thee one stone upon another because I knew it's not the time of thy visitation. Jesus foretells the destruction of Jerusalem. He told them several years before it happened. Before we can turn in this word of God and we can see what's going to transpire on this whole earth. We see what's laying ahead in the book of Revelation. And I don't have to talk about how drastic or how horrible, but it's going to be awful. Because one third of the earth is going to perish at one time of every living creature. And the Lord told us hundreds of years before it occurs. But the Jews were going about in good health. But sentence had already been passed. Now if you will, look at those last two verses on your page. Jesus said, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathered her chickens under her wings, 
would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. Destruction is coming. All because they rejected the one who came to save them from their sins. Thousands had let their opportunity pass by. Judgment was coming. The city was to be destroyed. And even the children were to suffer because of the sins of their parents. Did you hear that, parents? The children were to suffer because of the sins of their parents. You say, preacher, don't work that way. I said, it was worked that way. Look at all the people in Noah's day that perished with the flood. Every age group you can think of perished. It's because mom and dad didn't repent and turn to God. The city was to be destroyed and it was destroyed. Judgment came. The opportunity to make things right with God are limited and get this, to this life. It'll soon pass. I picked up a newsletter this week from a Catholic church. And the priest asked that everybody pray for those folks in purgatory. Pray for them, he said. Now, no word in my Bible does it say there's such a thing as purgatory. My Bible says in Luke chapter 16, verse 19, that says, There was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen, and he fared sumptuously every day. And there was a beggar named Lazarus that had laid his gate full of sores. Moreover, the dogs came and they licked his sores. It says, It came to pass that Lazarus died. And was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. And was comforted. And it says the rich man also died. I don't care how rich you are, folk. Money can't keep you here. The rich man also died. And in hell, he lifted up his eyes and Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus and made he dip his finger in water and cool my tongue for I'm tormented in this flame. And Abraham said, Son, remember the thou. You had good things. But mainly, the rich man rejected Christ. He was too busy gathering stuff things. But he said, Father Abraham, if, if you can't cool my tongue, then send Lazarus to my brothers. And if he come from the dead, they'll believe. Lest my brothers also come to this awful place. Abraham said, Son, if they believe my Moses and the prophets, the word of God, they won't believe if one rose from the dead, namely Lazarus. Oh, opportunity to escape that place is current, present, beyond the grave. Not such a thing. Either a person died with Christ or without him. That's what our Lord said, wasn't it? There's no in between. Either for me or against me, he said. So 
Today is the time to repent. How precious are the moments that we have here. Don't you, don't you imagine when that rich man in hell, he began to look back on his life and he said, man, I should have taken care of that business first. He never did get around to it. But folk, opportunity is ours in the Lord. Our opportunity is limited. We don't know how much longer we got, do we? So my challenge to you today, you let the rich man have all the hell he wants. You don't go there. Trust Christ as your Savior. And you come down this aisle telling me that you've trusted him and that saved you, my friend, by you trusting him where you are. And then if you come down and say you want to follow the Lord in baptism, we'll take care of that too for you.